So what I'd imagine that ordering food at a restaurant is a pretty mundane routine for most people. And from the outside, it's pretty mundane to me, too. I look there, I stand there and look up at the menu, trying to decide what I want for a good chunk of time. Kind of like this. But in my head, I'm running around frantically screaming that everyone is staring at me. The cashier needs me to hurry up. The people behind me <laughs> want me to leave. And that they're going to kick me out. Realistically, I don't think that'll happen. But if that's what's going through my mind when I'm ordering food, <laughs> you can imagine how terrified I am right now. And it's because I have social anxiety. And what social anxiety is, is a mental illness. And a mental illness means, well, my brain is ill. It doesn't function the way it probably should, and it definitely doesn't process information in the same way that most people do. Last year, I had to give a college presentation in my English class. So I asked my teacher if I could present to her at lunch. When my friend asked me why I didn't present on the day that I was assigned, I told him it was because of social anxiety. And he told me something that has stuck in my mind to this day, and it's a really massive no-no for like, anyone with anxiety, and it's everyone gets nervous. But I'm not just nervous. I'm constantly thinking about what could go wrong in the worst possible situation to occur. My thoughts are overwhelming and out of control and just built up over the day. And little things that most people do naturally I have to think about. I have to make a conscious effort to do them while most people can do them on instinct. It's not the content of what I'm presenting or how I'm presenting it. It's the situation I'm being put in, whether it's one person or a hundred. If it still doesn't make quite as much sense as to why anxiety is a much more serious situation than just being nervous, it's like a broken bone, or a <laughs> it's like having a hurt leg. Both of our legs are hurt. The only difference being, yours has a small bruise. There's a bone sticking out of mine. Obviously, my injury has been much, is much more severe, and I'm going to get medical attention for it, and you may not. This year, and one of my last classes, I had to give a presentation. And so I went to the teacher before it was due and asked if I could present at lunch. Because, well, I did it last year and I'm still doing it because I don't want to throw up in front of my class. And I feel like I'm going to throw up today, so if you see something in the garbage can resembling puke, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and she looked at me and shook her head very indecisively. And I could tell exactly what was running through her mind. I was being lazy. To her, me asking for presenting at seventh period or doing lunch was just my excuse for not having it done. Sure, my slideshow may not have been completely ready, but it would have been ready by the time I had to present. And that's something that I face every day. The struggle of people understanding what's going on and why it's such a big deal uh, presenting in front of a class of like 20 kids. Now, I mentioned that it's one of my last classes because I get socially exhausted. And because I have to consciously think about things that other people do naturally, I, all of that builds up over time and it becomes the straw to break the camel's back. I shut down, I start crying, I don't let anyone in, and it's frustrating for me, and it's damaged many of my relationships. I've even lost a really close friend because of it. And it becomes a catalyst for anxiety attacks. And for me, an anxiety attack is like there's a shadow behind me gripping my stomach, whispering things in my ear, and that's just how I feel normally. But anxiety attacks, there's, oh, that shadow brought some of its friends over. And now they're all punching me in the gut and yelling that I'm not good enough, that I'm messing up, they don't like me. And they are only with me out of pity. But one of the best things you can give to someone who is, str 
struggling with anxiety or you suspect is struggling with anxiety is reassurance and assurance in general that you don't hate them, that they are worth it, that they are important to you, that you do like them, that you're not mad at them. Because it's a thing I often ask. <laughs> so one of the ways that I have dealt with my anxiety is that I, or at least during an attack, is you do something that my therapist told me was five for five. So you think of five things for each of the five senses. Now it can be the room you're in or just in general. So you think of five things you can hear, five things you can see, five things you can smell, five things you can taste, and five things you can touch. It seems like a lot, or, it seems like, or maybe it seems insignificant, but it helps take your mind off the current situation. A shorter way to do that is just take a deep breath. And if you see me pause, taking deep breaths, well, now you know why. <laughs> I also find that getting a drink of water is really helpful. Once again, it takes your mind off the situation and you can recollect your thoughts. That is partially why there's a water bottle by me. Uh, it's symbolic in both, uh, I may need it. But that's just for anxiety attacks. Well, how do I deal with anxiety in my day-to-day -day life where it's not escalated completely to the point of shutting down and crying, but just normal, everyday interactions that do build up for me very quickly? A really big way that I do this is I do art. And I have a mural in the room next to my physics teacher's room. And I poured uh, at least 100 hours into this. Most of this was painted by me. I designed it, and I put most of the sketch up. I was in there every day during seventh period, painting and probably crying and also screaming at the wall, because it was frustrating. But when people ask me about it, I know that they're reaching out to me in a positive way, they want to interact, they want to know more about this. And when I hear people talking about it, because while well, I'm painting, and someone else asks someone right next to them, wait, what's she doing? What's that? Oh, she painted that most of her, by herself, most of, mostly. She did that. She's been doing that for a while. That was finished last month. It was supposed to be finished in October, but since I was working on it majority by myself, it took four months longer to complete. In the end, it was really worth it. I'm really proud of it. Another way that I find dealing with people in general and interacting with others is learning a new language. I love learning languages. Parce que je peux parler français ou dansk ou italiano. I don't feel any fear. It helps me connect with the person in a different way. And there's progress that can be felt by both parties. Not only are your conversations lasting longer, they can become more complicated and complex. And it's exciting to see some, not only someone else make that journey, but to be able to complete that journey yourself. Because oftentimes, most people can speak English, so they understand the difficulty that comes with learning another language. Now, the three languages I just spoke in were French, Danish, and Italian. I'm also trying to learn German. I really want to learn Japanese and Korean. Ah. And there's one more way that I find dealing with my anxiety is very helpful. So I'm a massive nerd, for those of you who didn't know. And I go to conventions. In fact, I have one next weekend, and I'm really excited for it. But I don't go into the, to these conventions dressed like how I am right now, or how you may be sitting in the audience. No, no, no. I dress up like a character, and it's called cosplay. And it's really hard to blend in when you're wearing a neon pink leotard. So people come up to me and ask for photos. They ask for photos of me, they ask for photos with me, and sometimes they even take videos. And you can imagine how nerve-wracking that is for someone with social anxiety, a stranger coming up to you and being like, hey, can I get your picture? But it's so uplifting when you see a child who's dressed just like you, and they point up and smile, and they go, mommy, mommy, look. Like, that's their hero who just walked by. They don't know any better. To them, they just saw the real, their real-life hero. They're just walking down that hall over to, the over to the convention booth, 
with a Deadpool t-shirt. All three of these have something in common. They all create a positive interaction in social situations that I am uncomfortable in. Because cosplay helps in a way that, on purpose, I make myself blend in at school. I wear dark clothing, I even, slunch, uh, even slouch to make myself smaller and keep my head down. And these are my anchors. Anchors can be something you're passionate about, a hobby, a, it can be a place, and most importantly, it can be people. People make great anchors, whether it's your friends or your family or even your dog or pet goldfish. They help you get through things that may seem otherwise intense. Sorry. Um. <laughs> Unfortunately, I know that anxiety is a battle that I will continue fighting for a very long time, if not the rest of my life. I'm always going to have to fight uphill, and the little big things that I've accomplished today are still not going to keep me from probably asking teachers if I can present at lunch and not in front of a class. I had months to prepare for this. I'm still terrified. So having only a week to do a presentation in front of 20 kids, is just as terrifying. I'm still going to be anxious next weekend when people come up and ask for my photo. I'm still going to be anxious when I have to go to another country and go through the airport security in, and go through airport security. I'm still going to get anxious, and I know that. But I know that I can do things like this. And I know that I have to learn how to cooperate with other people, even if I'm uncomfortable. But I also know I have to learn how to take a step back from everyone, because I just, if I go on anymore, I'm going to break down. Um, sorry. I know that it's really hard with mental illness and anxiety, and social anxiety in general, to interact normally with other people. But it's not an excuse for actions that are inexcusable. That doesn't make much sense, but... It's not an excuse for what you've done, it's only an explanation, because it didn't ultimately make that decision you did. It influenced you to make a decision, but ultimately, you chose that decision. If it's still a little blurry, think about it like uh, being drunk. Uh, you're still to blame for the actions you do under the influence, but uh, you can't just blame the alcohol. Don't drink. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it's, but you know that overall, you made the decision to drive while you were drunk. You don't get to blame alcohol, and so why do you get to blame depression or anxiety? You don't. I'm still going to get anxious. I'm still going to be anxious. But I know that I'm ready to make decisions that may make me anxious, and there's a time and a place where I feel ready. Okay, I have made this progress. I can make the decision to do this. I will still get anxious but I feel like I've come far enough along that I won't back out of it. I hope you leave today with a better understanding of what anxiety is, of what people with it go through, how to help those people who are struggling with it, or may be struggling with it, and a better tolerance for it in general. Thank you.